Greetings, this is Public Works. It is February 13th, and yes, that's the sun in my face. Welcome, Dan Gookin's not here today. He's someplace south, probably warm and sunny, maybe some beach time, but Dan, my man's here. And this is Public Works, and our first guy up today is Jim Rents from the Wastewater Department. Talk to us, Jim. Uh, I bring before you and the City Council an agreement for an electric service extension with the Vista for the tertiary treatment phase two project, our rather large project that we're just commencing. Uh, this agreement is to run uh, two sources of primary power to our TMF facility and install an automatic transfer switch at that location. It'll actually be in a Vista facility. It'll be outside of our fence, the transfer station, but what it does is it it automatically transfers power. So if one source of power goes down, it automatically switches to the other source and provides us continuous electric power for our process flowers and pumps and, and the such. So after meeting with <coughs> Vista, they've given us a, a cost estimate of $118,423 for this, this work. 63,000 of that is actually the automatic transfer switch itself, uh, which they will perform here in the next, uh, hopefully six to eight weeks once the snow is gone. If I can answer any questions. Questions? Well, it sounds like it's a prudent um, kind of a backup measure. I mean, we don't have it now, but it's uh, kind of a safety thing. Uh, yeah. This, uh, Actually, the, um, I think the state uh, DEQ requires us to have a redundant source of power. Uh, sometimes that's done with auxiliary generators, but in our case, because we have these two sources of electric power, we can do it with an automatic transfer switch. Um, this will provide power to the, I want to say, the north end, north end of the plant. We have a similar type facility at the south end provides it for the power for the south end of the plant, but this will be the north end of the plant, specifically the tertiary treatment yeah. building. We're good? Yeah. I have one question. So if, if it's all a Vista power and a Vista loses power, would a Vista have power? <laughs> switch between? Good question. I'm, just, I'm sorry. Good it's question. No, I, I, asked the, I asked the same thing. <laughs> Apparently these are two different sources from two different substations. Okay. And I guess the likelihood of both substations going down is very minimal. And with that, so. our fire sprinkler system has to have two phone lines. Well, if one phone line's down, why would the other phone line be good, right? Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. I have to think that way. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. good with that, I make a motion? Well, I would move for uh, to bring this matter to the council and approve the proposed electric service extension agreement between the city of Coeur d'Alene and Avista Corp and authorize the mayor to execute the agreement. And I will second that. And all those in favor? Aye. Aye. That means we go on, and I think we can put that on the consent. I didn't know what the size of it or if oh. it's pretty routine. Well, it's it's budgeted, right? Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. And they can bring it back. So right. nope, that's good. If Dan me. has any questions, I'm sure he'll bring it forward. Yeah. Moving right along, it's Dennis Grant all the way from engineering. Yes. Welcome, Dennis. Uh, well, good afternoon, council members. Uh, my name is Dennis Grant with the Engineering Services Department, and what we have before you today, uh, the applicant Melrose Properties LLC is requesting to vacate an alley. And I took a little aerial photo real quick just to so, you, so you can see the location. Um, it's a little difficult to tell, but uh, this is in the, where the hospital is. Up on the upper piece there, there's a little portion of ironwood, and so the hospital is right there. But the alley that we're va vacating is north of Emma and which and west of Medina so that's <laughs> uh, I'll show you an exhibit here in a second but that kind of there's a veterans building to the to the left there but uh, anyway uh, let me get that exhibit up for you oh, sorry. <laughs> 
Okay. So there's the exhibit. There's the alley that that Parkwood, I mean uh, Melrose Properties, uh, wants to vacate there north of Emma, west of Medina. Uh, the requested uh, right away was originally dedicated to the city core lane in 1908. And <clears throat> the vacation would not have any financial impact on the city and would add approximately 5,028 square feet to the county tax roll. Uh, the purpose of this request is to vacate a 16 foot wide dead end and unimproved public alley that there is no, no foreseeable future use for. The property on each side of the alley is owned by the applicant, which is uh, Melrose Properties, and the subject alley contains uh, city sewer and other franchise utilities which would be contained in an easement as part of the vacation ordinance when that comes up at, at uh, March 7th of uh, 2017 at the council meeting. So, staff recommends to the Public Works Committee to proceed with the vacation process as outlined in Idaho Code Section 50-1306 and to recommend to the City Council the setting of a public hearing for this item on March 7th, 2017. Any questions? No. Oh, was okay. this an alley at one time? Yes, and um, the applicant has been buying properties all in that area and they own all those properties on either side, so uh, it's it's pretty much uh, weeds and okay. uh, shrubs right now. So, all right. Well, I would be ready to make a motion to um, proceed with the vacation process as outlined in Idaho Code Section 50-1306 and recommend to the City Council the setting of a public hearing for this item on March 7th. Well, I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Me too. Aye. Okay. <laughs> Consent, please. <clears throat> well, we're just moving right along. And Mike Becker, the other side of the sewer treatment plant out there in the streets. Welcome, Mike. Good afternoon, Council. Uh, let's see if I can figure this out. F5. F5? That helps. Okay. It is a nice sunny day here in Coeur d'Alene, and uh, why are we here? Um, we're here to talk about the 2017 Open Trench Project. Um, uh, more specifically, here to talk about the bid results. Um, this year's Open Trench Project, the scope of work is uh, replacing approximately 2,500 feet of public sewer mains in four different locations in the city of Coeur d'Alene. We'll be restating uh, numerous laterals as well as abandoning some unused capped laterals. Uh, in several locations, we also have manholes that are located in the alley. We would like to relocate those out into the street into a hard surface paved area for crews to access. We'll also be repaving streets. And this year, we will not have any CIPP projects. Uh, location. <clears throat> well, as mentioned earlier, we have four locations. Up here, let's see if I can get this to work, is Schedule A. This is located on Garden Avenue between Mil uh, Military and Park Drive. Schedule B is the second project that's in the alley between A and B streets between Short between Short and Walnut. Project C is located over here by Lakes Middle School off of Hastings between 16th Street and 19th Street. We do have a Schedule D located down here on Pine. This is this road going up Tubbs Hill. These are the four project target areas for the, this year's Open Trench uh, projects. Um, some important dates to recognize is that we did go out for advertising per Idaho statute. We had a public uh, bid opening on February 7th. Uh, the wastewater utility will be holding a public open house meeting for impacted residents on March 15th. Mailers have already gone out for on January 10th to notify the public of these projects. I am also working with our uh, Sam Taylor, our deputy administrator, on getting out a public service announcement on our website. Uh, construction date, here's a new one for City of Coeur d'Alene. We're going to start this in the springtime. We looked at this for several reasons. One of them is, well, 
we've got a lot of street projects this year to minimize the impact on the community we thought wastewater would go ahead and accelerate our projects up front for spring construction to minimize the impact overall impact to this community during the summer tourist months we have a target completion date of substantial completion on june 1st what does that mean uh, basically they have till july 1st to get the whole thing completed this year's project you'll notice we also have schedule d which we treated as an ad alt uh, project and the reason we did this is we did not know where the construction bids were going to come in bidding out this early wastewater typically doesn't bid this out until springtime having a wintertime bid we expected that the prices would come in re really reasonable which they did um, however we're going to uh, address on doing schedule d at a later date october 1st uh, we will hold a public house on that one on the 15th of august as well as a completion date targeted for November 20th. Uh, why are we picking these projects? Well, uh, we're replacing the sewer mains that are actually, the pipes are pulling apart. And in many cases, I'll show you a, 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 a photograph that shows that the lines are actually uh, misaligned. Um, that makes service for our crews very difficult. We're dealing with root intrusion and Garden Avenue. We have all those trees that are growing very healthily this time of year uh, right on top of our sewer main. So not surprisingly, they still have leaves on those trees. Um, we also have a couple, couple uh, on Hastings, we have our sewer main that's crossing private property and it is also undersized. Here's the breakdown of the bids that we received on the 7th. And as, as you can see, um, there is quite a discrepancy between all three contractors that submitted bids. Um, however, uh, $323,000 uh, does seem reasonable um, when compared to the engineer's estimate. And as you can see, we did look at Ad Alt D as biddable items however the basis of our award was identified in the contract documents as schedules a b and c for three hundred twenty three thousand dollars appears to be the lowest responsive bidder uh, remember previously i mentioned something about the pipes being disaligned as you can see you can't even see the other end of this pipe uh, wastewater crews have difficulty actually jetting out and cleaning this pipe with our equipment and often what happens is our equipment gets stuck in the pipes and we end up resulting to a contractor digging up the street at whatever periods in the year to access that pipe remove the stuck equipment so we can keep service going uh, year round our end product is this big difference so with that, um, staff recommends that we proceed with awarding the contract to Big Sky Development for the base bid amount of $323,564.35. And with that, if you have any questions for me, I'll be more than happy to yeah. answer them. Um, well, no, we've been through this <laughs> before, but... Um, it looks straightforward, and um, you know I, I'm trusting our legal staff and everybody to review what they need to. So um, I don't think I have any other. Just a couple <coughs> things. So when the pipe bends, how does that happen? These are big concrete pipes, right? Yes, in some cases, concrete pipes they bend at the joints. So imagine it's kind of like a vertebrae. They bend at the pivot points, and so when they actually form that bend, um, it results from what we call uh, unconsolidated uh, settlement. In other words, we have differential areas where there's greater forces applied to the pipe for a number of reasons. A lot of them have to do with roots from trees pushing against the pipe, looking for the contents inside our sewer lines. And in the older part of town, is when you talk about sewers in the alleys. Is that correct? Yes. And there's something to be said about that. You don't quite have the trees and the amount of traffic and all that, right? Correct. Um, however, 
What makes it so uh, restrictive and confining is our alleys are very narrow compared to our streets. And we often have to contend with garages and fences and landscaping that's brought up right to the edge of the alley. Gotcha. And so that makes construction for and progress very difficult and sl cumbersome and slow. You don't repave alleys though too, mm -hmm. right? Any alleys that we have to tear apart, we will repave. <laughs> Grade it and make it pretty. Yeah. Well, I guess just to clarify, um, you're recommending that we approve the base bid, but there was that extra potential add-on. Does that is what's that? Oops. Uh, is that based on if we have enough money left over, or time in the calendar? Or? We do have enough in the budget to do at all for it this time. However, the wastewater utility is pursuing um, some state-of-the-art technology on our manhole lifting. Um, as residents, I'm sure you're aware that the diamond cuts that we're forming on some of our manholes are failing and we're getting potholes and um, uh, just a rough road that's promoting, you know, um, destruction on wear and tear on vehicles as well as plow equipment from the manholes there. So we have actually f discovered some new technology that the wastewater utility would like to do some pilot projects this summer before we invest into the equipment. Um, <clears throat> presently we're having, we're struggling with uh, this technology is quite popular in Lewiston, the Tri-Cities, Boise is now doing this. However, those communities don't use the um, the de-icing uh, solutions that we use and so their their solution is to have concrete all the way up well we all know what de-icer does to concrete here in North Idaho so we have pursued this with Kalispell, Sandpoint as well as um, the Twin Cities in Minneapolis, Minnesota um, and we're experiment we want to experiment with asphalt depth we'll still do the uh, we won't use concrete we'll use control density fill underneath there but that should help with the the settlement of these adjustments around the city's manholes out on our streets so we would like to take some of the money that we're ordinarily doing for our rehab and this is this would fall under that definition of rehabilitating uh, adjusting these manholes to to finish surface and uh, see what happens good yeah Sounds like you've got some other priorities right. for the, uh, if there is money left. So I, I would make the motion to award the 2017 open trench project contract to Big Sky Development for the base bid of $323,564.35. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. What do you think? Consent or have Mike come back? Um, well, good that's pictures. a lot of, that's a lot lot of money. money. You all yeah. right for that? One evening with the uh, council? It would be my pleasure to give them a hard time sure to we'll show have some cocktails. graphic pictures. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll put that on the agenda if you don't mind. Thanks. Very good. We appreciate good. it. Thank you for your presentation. All right. Last but not least, all the way from the wells out there that take care of our showers and toilets, <laughs> Terry Pickle, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to come for you this afternoon. I'm sorry that Council Member uh, Gookin couldn't be here because he actually was part of this project originally. Um, what we are looking at is, uh, we originally were looking at a new water storage facility out in the northeast quadrant of the city. Uh, our 2012 comp plan uh, identified uh, possible uh, shortfall in storage out there. Uh, so we went to uh, went out for a selection RFQ for uh, 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 consultants and selected JUB uh, thanks to Councilmember Gukin's uh, assistance with that and uh, had them come in and do uh, a proposal for the, the project. Uh, they came in with a proposal to um, one, uh, locate a site, two, to uh, identify the size and, and uh, type of tank, and three, to help us locate uh, the property and acquire it, and then uh, four would be to uh, do public outreach to the to the areas to make sure that everything fit with the neighborhood so that we didn't have any uh, property owners uh, up, upset with us. And then five, to do the construction. 
uh, in that we decided to update the water model and uh, from a uh, static type which just you enter in the static type you enter your pressures it gives you a result we went to a dynamic model which actually gives you a little more uh, involvement and function with the model and gives it a little more uh, realistic characteristics of the water system and how it functions and that to me that was money well spent because it uh, kind of turned the project around on us here. We discovered that the water storage facility that we thought was going to be the end all project to fix all this uh, pressure regular pressure uh, fluctuations in the northeast quadrant didn't do it. It wasn't going to help. So uh, they've kind of worked themselves out of a monumental uh, project into a smaller project where we're going to do some modifications to the water system itself. Um, by, uh, let me go further, uh, by uh, changing some settings on our pumps um, and changing pressure reducing valves that we have in the system currently that was put in in 2007 that's causing a portion of the problem. And uh, also the big thing we've been dealing with is the Bastille tank. It has never functioned properly in the system. We've always had problems with it. It does not regulate itself with the tub seal tanks and so we get some water stagnation, we get some elevation problems, it fills too fast. So we are looking at installing a booster station at the tub seal tank. Everybody says, oh no, you don't want to do that, don't want to do that. That's not the way to operate a system. And we, we understand that's not the best scenario. But it's the best scenario at this point to get that tank functional to operate the system as it should. So by placing a booster station out there, we can actually pull the water from the tank at the times of the day when we actually need it out in the system i.e. early mornings between uh, 6 and 9 o'clock in the morning when everybody's irrigating in the summer, uh, you know, get that early irrigation water out there and get the best use of it. That's when we are seeing our pressure fluctuations in the northeast quadrant. So by putting that booster station in, we can actually pull the water out of the tank. We can fill it, you know, late evening, early at night, then pull that water back out, put it back in the system where it needs to be and alleviate those pressure fluctuations. So we... Uh, So we were looking at a phase two project with JUB. I broke this, originally I broke this project down into five phases. Uh, phase one uh, contract was for 66,000. That was the design of the, uh, or the update of the water uh, model and uh, uh, potential locations for the new tank and uh, sizing it and to get, uh, con or get a, a realtor involved in uh, property acquisition. Um, we're still looking at that property. That tank will be needed in the future at build out but it's not needed right now, but we thought it was still prudent to go ahead and locate some property before it all gets developed. Uh, so we have a site for the tank, so we're still moving forward with that. Um, so phase two, we're looking at establishing a new contract with JUB for <coughs> design of the booster station, uh, reworking of the pressure uh, reducing valves in the zone to change them to pressure sustaining valves so we actually hold the pressure in the northeast quadrant rather than allowing it to flow into the general zone where we're a little short on our uh, needed water usage. And then uh, so we, uh, they'll, they'll identify an altered scope of work. Uh, we've established some uh, proposed costs and then we've uh, submitted a proposed contract for the council's review. Uh, in this uh, phase, we'll continue the property search. Uh, we thought we had a good location. Turned out at the Evans property that the, proper, the, the location he was looking at selling us was actually too high. Uh, we couldn't get a tall enough tank to operate with our two standpipes, and uh, he's not interested in giving us a site or selling us a site a little bit lower down the hill because he doesn't want a visible tank. He wanted a buried tank, which we thought would work, but it would cost so much to do. It's just not practical. So we're looking at. Uh, probably some other sites, either in Canfield or south of Thomas Lane, some other people we've contacted that are interested that may be able to, to work with us at the elevation we need to have to get about a 60 or 70 foot tank um, to put in. Uh, we're looking at modification of the pressure reducing valves. Um, ideally, uh, we think we can modify what's existing there, but we did put into the budget just in case we needed to pull them out and replace them completely. We did put enough money in the budget to be able to do that. Um, we're looking at pump operation changes, and this is kind of unique. Uh, typically, our pumps operate on start and stop on elevation levels of the tanks. Um, with the model, we were able to determine that if we put a setting in there where we could actually start to pump at a certain time rather than an elevation, we could minimize that dip between 6 and 9 o'clock in the morning. 
we got with our uh, SCADA person, and he said that is possible to have the pump start at time and then stop on elevation. So we've already got that built into the system. Um, and then we're also looking at expansion of the high zone. We thought we needed that tank to do that. The model showed that we could do it with what we have for existing storage, so we're proposing to go ahead and expand the high zone down into uh, Appleway and Government Way, uh, clear over to Appleway and Ramsey, really? and take in some areas that are, uh, right now, fire flow is kind of questionable in those areas, but this will solve that problem. And then, of course, we talked about the best deal booster tanks, or booster pumps. So you're actually changing those districts? Yes. Wow, that's so we're changing cool. the system boundary. And here's a good example of right here. <coughs> this, them up. Uh, this is the existing boundary between the high zone and the general zone right now. Uh, this is uh, right here is Government Way and Apple Way. So we'll take in this area here down to Apple Way, take Apple Way clear over to Ramsey, take in uh, a portion of uh, Winco and all that area and bring that into the high zone. So their fire, their fire uh, uh, flow will increase as well as the pressure will increase by about 30 pounds. So. And that's just by re redirecting the water and stabilizing by closing, the tanks. By closing some valves and really? isolating portions of the system, yes. We'll have to insert at least one valve at Government Way and Apple Way right in the middle of the intersection, so that's going to be a nighttime project. <laughs> so that will be something that we'll have to do. There might be a couple other valves we'll have to insert. A good portion of this is already planned. We have a new uh, pressure-reducing valve station at Lee Court and Apple Way that was installed in 2007 that's right now is locked open. We'll actually activate that, and that will become the separation between the high zone and general zone at that point. And with a couple of valves, we'll shut off here and there. And so we're working on that portion right now, getting that all identified. So that will help a great deal with fire flow. It'll also take some of the load off of the general zone because we have more supply in the high zone than we do in the general zone. We're lacking about 5,000 GPM in the general zone. So we're looking to offset that, offset that by expanding that zone and uh, bringing some more load off of the best hill tank and uh, help expand that system. That's great, Terry. So you did say nighttime, not nightmare, right? Both. Okay. <laughs> I was just trying to remember yes, what we'll, you it said. It will probably be a nighttime because we'll have to shut down probably about four or five blocks of Government Way and Apple Way to be able to do it. We'll have to depressurize so we can set the valve in between everything. There's another method where you can do it live, but it's very, very expensive, and we haven't tried it yet. It's called a valve insertion. There's companies that do that. You actually come in, and they have a tool that clamps around the pipe. You can actually insert a valve in a live pipeline. But it's about $16,000 just for the equipment, whereas the 12-inch butterfly valve, we're looking at about $1,400, plus our time to dig it up and install it, work with the street department to get it paved first thing in the morning and have Apple Way back in, in operation within one day. And nobody goes without water. And nobody goes without water, exactly. Awesome. Then we're able to switch those zones. So. Here at uh, the Best Hill Tank, um, we're hoping to place the uh, booster station at the, the tank inside the, the fenced area. The problem is the power up on here at Best Hill Road is single phase. We need three phase power. Uh, so we've got to get with the Vista and see whether they can reconstruct that or we might have to locate it somewhere close to 15th Street to bring power, sufficient power in there. So, I mean, it could go anywhere in along here. It won't affect any of the neighborhoods. It'll be a small station, duplex pump, and uh, that should pull about 2,000 GPM out of that tank when we need it. And it's, you know, right now we're targeting the peak demand season, but this tank will actually be able to operate year-round because we have problems with that tank operating properly all year long. So we'll be able to operate it make that tank function a whole lot better. So. so then we'll, we're, we were, the tank, the, when we were going to build the storage tank, we were talking two to three years to construct that. This, most of it, except for the booster station, we should be able to have operational by summer. Um, so what we'll do is we'll get everything operational. We'll hope to have the booster station at least operational by summer. We'll sit back and observe, see if everything works as we have shown in the model and what we plan. And if that all does work, we'll close out the project. If it does not meet everything we had to do, we have a backup for a phase three project. And that would be um, an additional um, booster station or booster pump at Honeysuckle to move water in that 24-inch main we put in in 2007 to, towards the northeast section. We don't think that will be necessary, but the model does show that that will improve the system further if we do need to go that route. 
Uh, the other thing we're looking at is a new uh, source for the general zone. Um, right now, this property here on 4th and Appleway is all up for sale. Uh, we have problems with the, the 4th Street well right here with access onto uh, 4th Street and uh, trying to get a crane in there to work on it and everything. You just can't do it. So we're looking at purchasing some property behind here. Uh, we've talked with the, the uh, representative or agent of the, uh, the property owner. They're willing to work with us uh, for a proposal. So we're looking at buying some property behind 4th Street well. Uh, we've already talked to the church about maybe getting some access from them into that site so we don't have to buy a large chunk. We're maybe looking at enough to maybe do two wells. Um, Fourth Street well will do easily do 3,000 gallons per minute, so if we did another well in that area uh, with an additional uh, chunk of main, we could up that to six to 7,000 gallons a minute with two wells in that area. So that's what we're looking at as a uh, third phase, and uh, uh, we're negotiating on that property right now. Troy has been kind of working with us on it, so uh, he's in on the, the project and kind of has an idea. They, it's, it's kind of expensive property. It's all commercial. Uh, they want to sell it all in one chunk because they own this whole piece around here, including this building, all this frontage. We don't want frontage. We want, you know, just basically some spot back here. We have an easement along there now with a pipeline, so that's what we're looking at in a possible third phase if we need to go that route. So, Terry, if you end up in that area... Does a new pump have to new, put in new pipe, or do you just yes. so new whole new well, uh, whole new line, whole new you know your so you don't 1. just 1. feed million. that one line that's already there. Uh, there is a 12-inch line there. We'd probably have to put in some more pipeline to direct it towards 15th Street. Uh, so that would take some creative. But we do have a 12-inch line that goes back behind there and feeds both out to 4th Street and then uh, also out to uh, Haycraft. So we do have. We do have the capacity there. It'll take a little bit more uh, of a way to get it over to 15th Street to help out with the uh, the load there. So, but um, originally, when we were doing the tank, we were looking at a budget between 3.5 and 5 million dollars to build that tank, depending on how much rock we had to go into. Uh, with these modifications, we expect them to be under 1.3 million. We kind of went worst case scenario in case we needed to do everything full blown from the ground up, but we believe it'll be well under that. Uh, we'll have most of it operational by summer rather than two years out. And uh, with that, I will take any questions you have. Well, it sounds pretty impressive. And uh, if I if I'm hearing it right, you're coming to us with. Uh, kind of a pleasant surprise asking us to approve spending less money than <laughs> exactly <laughs> less money and do it quicker that's yes. I mean what's not faster. to like yeah yeah so we're looking for a contract with JEB for up to $124,670 now their last contract like I said was about 66,000 we've only spent 52 of that so far so, so we're doing well under budget a couple things so this is eliminating a, a whole a whole tank, and a tank is those high it's not eli Well, it's eliminating a new one. It's right. not taking out what we already have. Right. Uh, if, and it's not necessarily eliminating it. It's just pushing, pushing it off into the future. We will need it when we get reach build out. That's a foregone conclusion. But we really don't need it now, um, and costs will depend on where we end up doing it. It will also give us a chance to build infrastructure to the new site in a gradual status rather than all at once you know putting that will defer some of that uh, cost out into the future and possibly we can get some development help at that point too so let me ask you about pumps we, we pumps are kind of a new pressure pumps you're saying mm -hmm. That's somewhat new we've been kind of on this gravity world for quite a while yes they're not necessarily new I mean we have booster stations you Boosters. know on Elm Street Blackwell Island and then Tubbs Hill right. Uh, so it's not something new. Is the concept of doing it at a tank to pull water from the tank to push it in the system to fix a problem is kind of a little bit of a new concept. I love it. It's saving money, and it's, and that information came from us spending money with JUB. Is that correct? That's correct. I like that, too. You spend 50 over here, and you save a million over there. Yeah, they kind of work themselves out of a contract. I'm going to give those guys kind of an attaboy when I see them, you know. So. No, this is really cool. I remember we talked not too long ago, another tank. Oh, geez, that's a yeah. lot, a lot of money and yeah. time 
and then you find out that's not necessarily going to fix so, it. That won't fix the problem, and as the uh, finance director and I go back and forth on, you're building a lot of infrastructure for three to five months of the year. Yeah. So this pushes that off in the future that will actually, the tank will be needed more than just three to five months to solve a little problem. Remind us how many pumps are running right now? Right now, we are running two pumps. Two pumps, and in the yeah. summer, we're running? We're running 10. 10. Yeah. Yeah, so we've got a lot of money out there for just a few to months. To water lawns, huh? It is. <laughs> but we sure got good tasting water, don't we? <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think it does make sense to tie up some land now. I mean, that, it won't get cheaper, so that's. It won't get cheaper, and it's getting more and more scarce. Yeah. That's yeah. the problem. At any price, yeah. Um, Good job on that. What do you think? Do you think the council should hear this? I hate to tie up all our big guys on a Tuesday night. Um, it's a great story, and I don't know if everybody's aware of the history of our pumps and wells and, you know, storage right. facilities. Right. Um, I can go either way, and but oh, thanks. maybe Councilman Gook and he might want to tell a story. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> Why don't we plan on you coming? Okay. Because this is good. That's fine. And, and you can kind of do the big picture and this th save this much money, spent this much money in a new approach, and then we can give Gook an attaboy. Yeah. Oh, don't go. tell him ahead of time. He won't watch this. Okay. So I'm looking for a Okay. So motion. I will make a motion to uh, authorize the mayor to enter into a consultant contract with JUB Engineering for provision of engineering and consultant services for phase two of the design construction and implementation of the water system improvement. Do I need to mention <laughs> the prices? I think not. Okay. So I'll bring it up. So I'll second that and all those in favor. Aye. 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 Terry, this is awesome. Thank this you. is really good news and it's nice to see sort of a different approach to things because I didn't know there was other ways to look at things, you know. <laughs> I've been raised by the old school water guys, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank well, without you. any ado, I think we can adjourn and call it a night. Thanks, Jeff, for helping us out. Happy Valentine's Day tomorrow. <laughs> Don't forget your honeys. Good. Thank you.